Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome back to Podcast Bozo, where a few knuckleheads, which is us, learn new things each week with you, our listeners. Today, we are talking about cancel culture, call out culture, social shaming, contextual bleaching, making up for mistakes, and hopefully after that, we will come to a conclusion on the right approach to deal with the celebrity missteps and missteps of our own. Uh, as a warning, this is part three of a three part series. There are two parts before this, they're already out. Go back, listen to them. Uh, get some context to this conversation and jump back in. We cut these up so that our listeners, you guys, can kind of bite off small bits. We're trying to make it easier for new listeners to get in on it. We've gotten that advice from a couple people. Um, and it's no skin off your back if you want to listen to all three at the same time because they all come out at the same time. So today on Season 3, Episode 8, I'm here with Eli, our resident artist, Cheek, our certified beer server, and I'm JJ, but you can call me Hagen Rupert Stubius. You've heard that one two times before if you've heard the other ones. Before we put the pedal to the metal, we want to encourage you to contribute to the conversation. Communicate with us over the social medias or our website. And Cheek's not here to tell us how you can find it, so I'm going to do it. You can find us at podcastbozo.com or P-O-D-C-A-S-T-B-O-Z-O uh, on any social media. Um, just check us out there. Speaking of our website, go there, donate. We'll read whatever you write in the donation message and or write you a little backstory. Not sure what that means. Donate to find out. Plus, that money all goes back into production and distribution of the podcast, so it just gets better and better and better and better and better. So thanks for listening. Uh, this, again, is part three. Go back to listen to part one and two if you haven't yet, uh, and you're jumping right in the middle of a conversation from those ones. So thanks. I think what we were talking yeah. about beforehand could be a fun topic, though, too, for another time. We don't we shouldn't dive back into it, but the burden of knowledge and privilege which is yeah. me being sarcastic and saying that, but also a real thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. There's so many sides to these arguments. It, it honestly confuses me. Like, I don't know. Some of these things are just like, they, there's so many sides to them. There's so many contexts of how you understand life and how you understand, like, even if you're talking on the economy side of things, everyone has a different take on the, you would think the economy side of things is just math. There's an answer to it, but there's not, you know, like people have different takes on the, on like how the economy can solve people's lives and economy can like market correcting. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying there's, there's multiple sides of things. Then, then there's the other side where like people are only focused on social issues and they're far left. And then there's the far right. And then no one's willing you, you start in the gray, you start trying to solve the same issue and everyone just starts splitting so hard and you just dig your heels in like, and I think that kind of brings me to the last segment of what this podcast would be for this episode. And it's, it's how do you as a person heal how do you person as a person, what's the right way, first of all, for a celebrity to come back from an Didn't, issue, from a, from a slip not, up? Not, not that I want to kick hip out here. Didn't E have a lot of things he wanted to say about that? Yeah, I was just going to say, let's, uh, let's have E jump back in. I appreciate the uh, couple minutes with you guys. All right, hip, we'll get you back for another up. full lap. <laughs> get, yeah. get scrum, get scrum. He's, he's been yanking at my chain, too. Well, just so yeah, he, he was crawling under the table, pulling at Hip's peen, uh, which dangles very low, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> such tight jeans, that thing dangles. But just so our viewers know, Hip sounds like he's going to be right here, which I hope he will be. Um, and Cheek, what are you doing? Just waving. Oh, okay. Um... Hip's going to be here, and also, he might be here next week, too. So, that's not the last you've heard of Hip. If you drop... If you're about to drop off because you just heard Hip talk, uh, come back and drop off again next week. <laughs> um, Cheek, there's no need to stand like that right now. Um, you're making me nervous. <laughs> I just, but, I'm sitting right. on a stool with no back. It's very uncomfortable. It's sometimes Fair easier enough. to stand up. Ian and I have the privilege of hip holding his hands up behind us to lean on. So, yeah. <laughs> I need a photo of this position. <laughs> right now. Lay back. But, uh, all right. So, E, did you, did you understand the context could, of what we're talking I, about there? I, I heard everything you were talking about. I just couldn't hear cheek. 
Uh, yeah. Hip, you said some awesome stuff. Hip, you said some dumb stuff. You dumb <laughs> it. He's filming right now. Um, yeah, awesome. I, I really liked what I heard. Um, we're on the topic of how you heal. Mm. Well, Ch Cheek made a good point that you had some stuff you want to talk about, such right. as contextual bleaching, where like... There, is that the same as bleaching was, your bee hole, or is that? <laughs> did you film in on that? No, I did not. That is simulation type stuff. Um, she, she, we joked about how we wanted to just <laughs> fill you in for this talk topic by telling you research bleached bungholes, <laughs> and then have you try and relate that to what we're culture. talking about. Uh, but ble bleach contextual bleaching is like basically when back in the days in the eighties and nineties, nineties especially when. The real cancel culture was the thing where you would actually get people removed from their jobs and not just make it a popular thing to say cancel um, when that was a real thing. And then eventually culture takes that thing till it becomes like something fun to say, but it doesn't really necessarily mean anything. And that's that's contextual bleaching. It happens in a, ha happens in a lot of cases. And I think it's an interesting thing. Not to be aware of, aware of, but it is something that happens, you know, like th there's a lot of times where we say things as a culture a lot, especially on Twitter and Instagram, and everyone says it over and over and over and over and again until it stops becoming what it originally meant and becomes a fun thing to say. Um, that being said, E, you don't believe in cancel culture, and well, that's right. what you were going to get into. Yeah, I... Also, the Earth is flat. Let's get this all on the table. There's no moon. There's no moon. Um, well, I, I prepped something for this episode. Like, I started journaling my thoughts on this, and I just started spewing. And I came out with a whole spiel that I want to let out at some point. But that's separate from, uh, that's separate from the cancel culture thing. But I think that... Well, give us your spiel. Can you... Would I'll, it be I'll so s out of context to give it now? Sure. I, I'm just debating whether or not to give the cancel culture thing first or the spiel. I feel like the spiel thing might be so heavy that it might avalanche everything else. Well, do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I, wanna, I want... Do, do you whatever you think's right. All right. Do whatever you think's well, right. Well, one thing Hip was talking about was like... Hip. Most people... Hip, hip. <laughs> most people can't... Uh, like, this isn't in their realm. They got better shit to be talking about which I think is a good point because with a topic like this, where there's, what were you saying? It's called contextual. Contextual bleaching. Bleaching. Where bleaching there's cheeks, asshole. Bleaching cheeks, asshole. Where yeah. there's just Next so many in Denver, avenues. we're doing that live on the pod. <laughs> bleaching, bleaching your asshole. <laughs> That's a that's a contextual obligation that you just made. <laughs> you legally have to do that now. My point is that there's <laughs> there's so many uh, there's so many talk like conversations being had that at a certain point you have to weigh what's the most important thing that we should be talking about. Like it's not this single person's career. I think it should be the broad concept of what cancel culture is. So I don't think it exists because people ha it, cancel culture is just people on social media their opinion and that is nothing new it's just social media and the power of it has allowed people with no voice to have a voice so the only person doing the canceling is the employer canceling the employee so like if you take for example louis ck who had the sexual misconduct allegations um he is not canceled like he's still touring and performing and doing shows. And while he is limited by people who will have him perform venues who will have him on, he's still doing it. He's still a comic no matter well, what. Right. He was, it was like, he was put in the pocket of the studio until it was, it got soothed over almost. Well, I, his career definitely took a hit. No, I think people Yo, in general don't, he lost TV shows. He lost a lot. He was, actually can't i don't think he's going to be somebody who's breezed over i don't think you'll ever see him on a tv show ever again i would i wouldn't say that i mean there with uh with things today everything's so polarized like if you take uh, that oan news 
and like Ben Shapiro and all that, there are so many people who say things so often that would normally get someone fired or off a show, but there's now such a network and a community for people who pay good money to have that person saying those things. Like there's a whole market for people who get canceled. It's not like they are off the map anymore. It's just, they have a different audience. Yeah. It's like a, this, the, it's like where you go when you become a Ninja Turtle, you go into the sewers. You go into the sewers. Exactly. Yeah, You're yeah. a Ninja Turtle. And there's people canceled. there. There's people there listening would you, to you. Would so. you consider Kevin Spacey canceled? Yes. I don't know much about that. He was uh, enticing he was diddler, right? boys to diddle with him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he lost. I don't his, get what you mean he, by that, but yeah, he was show canceled. On Netflix he got scooped like up Louis by C. cancel K. culture. Lost his show on FX. You know, like the studios let go of him. Netflix people aren't working with him anymore. Louis C.K. might be touring at these underground, you know, misogynistic, awful comedy clubs that nobody knows about or cares about in the mainstream because I think, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I just think that Louis CK was a poor example. I think that man is canceled. Sure. Well, I want to, I want to get away from the specific examples, but what I'm trying to say is that it's not like uh canceling someone is just like throwing them in the grave. Know, like they they are still going to be they're still going to be doing the things that they do mm -hmm. and that I think an important thing to know is that the blame or like the the target of cancel culture is put on social media when in fact it should be the actual businesses who hire those people and are making the decision that hey if we if we throw this person overboard we're going to basically separate ourselves from all the, the social um, backlash that's going on. Like one of my examples I was going to use was the NFL with uh, Colin Kaepernick oh. taking a kneel. He, yeah, he, he basically, he protested and the NFL blacklisted him. And then when BLM picked up pace, they realized we're going to look bad. We better shift our stance and then they start putting like blm on the helmets and um as a franchise just stating like hey we're in support of equality so complete 180 mm -hmm. and no it, apology no apology they just brushed it under the carpet like nothing happened and yeah like they were there the whole time and like all and yet the conversation is still focused on social media and them being but I guess this. All right, let me let me hit my spiel. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll let I, you. I have a lot of questions on that because I totally agree. It's fucking messed up that people do that. But that's society working its arms, you know, to make things work the right way. I don't know. I'm torn on that because, like, yes, yeah, fucked up that people ignored Colin Kaepernick and then they said. It's not chill that he kneeled because he's disrespecting our troops. And for three years after that, people said like, oh, like this isn't an issue. And they ignored peaceful protests. And then when violent protests start happening, the narrative switches to these are terrorists and rioters and things like that. And like, I get that there's other people being affected by this stuff. But if you really don't want like how else are people's messages going to get across at some point? Like you tried the peaceful protests for so long. Nothing really made a change. Yeah, you, you set me up to spike. I, I like, I like right, the point. Spike my balls. I like the e. point that you said more attention needs to be drawn to the employer, the company. They need to be held accountable for employing somebody or standing behind or letting somebody go, you know, that needs to, there needs to be a larger role there. Accountability is key. So you said, you, you talked about the narratives being blown up. That is the crucial part is that with every conversation, it is basically trickled down from some point. So someone brings a narrative, a 
talking point and then people discuss it. It's like he posts something on Instagram and then people comment about it, you know, like that. You got to focus on the narrative being said. And one thing that bothers me is how people will complain about how they don't feel safe saying things. So they'll say something like people are too sensitive. And it's this mindset that like, I, I know I'm not creepy. I'm not racist. Everyone's too sensitive. Take me seriously. They're like, they take mm-hmm. things too seriously. It's the world who's wrong. It's not me. Like, mm-hmm. I know I'm good. Everything else is too sensitive. And I think therein lies the biggest issue in our society, which is that not nearly enough people can recognize and admit when they're in the wrong. So I think if you're truly a good person and you say, like you say you are, you will take the time and pay attention to what's being said and who's saying it, because that's what all revolves around. So when I, when I pay close attention to what's being said, I see the term cancel culture used by those in power attempting to halt substantive change. I see cancel culture as a term weaponized by those in power to stoke fear and change and maintain the status quo. And it plays off the idea that you are perfect just the way you are. Everyone else is too sensitive. It comforts you and says, you don't need to change. Those trying to change you are crazy. True. Cheek. And (laughs) Joker, you can listen to the comforting words of uh, the rich and powerful, or you can listen to the cries of help from those at the bottom. I think when you look even closer, you see that what the status quo is, is you see that the rich and powerful want to maintain 34 million people living in poverty, the gutting of the environment, targeting of immigrants, defense of white supremacy, killing people of color in the streets, and covering up after those officers. But wait, there's more. (laughs) New Crest Whitening Strips clean 99.7% <laughs> of gunk out of those grubby gums and a new fast activating serum, technologically fresh. <laughs> One of my favorites is the fetishization of consumerism. <laughs> uh, try saying that five times fast. The fetishization. 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 The fetishization. I can even say that one word. The fetishization of consumerism. The fetishization of consumerism. A good cheek. Cheek. Mr. Mr. Articulation, your Marvel superhero power would be the ability to articulate words wisely. That would be a nice one. <laughs> I got a freaking list. I'm just saying fetishization. Fetush. No, <laughs> fetush. A fetush la bouche, coco la bouche. You also get, with the status quo, bigger tax breaks for the rich, yet free health care is out of the question. They pacify the country with opioids and religion. Fuel homophobia, hate, and misogyny, fight for control over women's bodies, and after all this, act like every life is precious and they care. This country is being cucked by rich white dudes singing us lullabies, and half of the people are falling asleep to it. And that is my take on cancel culture. It's just comforting people saying, hey, don't change. Everyone who's trying to like make you improve yourself and all this is... Crazy. Don't listen to it. Did you write that, E? Yeah, it was, I journaled this and... Are you tripping? No. It's po- I, 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 don't just, mean to, I don't mean to devalue it by that. It's just so poetic. Ish. It was like a... It was like a dam that just broke. Your water broke? My water broke. <laughs> and, and I took this a few different ways. I thought of... I mean, if, it's, it's accurate. It's if that accurate. is... If that was too much, if that was a lot for you, my takeaway... Um, is that the world is a lot like a game of Sims where the kid playing got bored is now torturing us and trapping us in one by one rooms, starting grill fires and removing the ladder from the pool while we're swimming and locking Pete in your basement. I think that was incredible. And I think that sums up a lot about where we are today and a lot about how a lot of us feel and I'm going to have to listen to that one multiple times. Yeah, you've got we need to tag that ep- excerpt or get a screenshot of that notes and that needs to be yeah, shared sure and posted cuz I agree with that sentiment a lot and I think that's really really cr- really in, really cr- in really post, I'm going to take that clip 
and just replay it for like eight times. So this becomes like a 30, three hour I think, episode. I think you need to record your speech again. And then we can play the speech yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like a miracle, but with some motivational music behind it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I, I like the idea up. of we record it separately and then just play it silently on replay in the back of the whole episode. I'd like to get a, uh, I'd like to get some like weird hip hoppy music behind that commercial crest commercial, by the way. Ooh, cheek, sing us a song. Boop, bop, da, 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 boom, bop. She can't scat. I, uh, I'd scat. like to add on one more thing though. You play trombone. Um, I want to, I want to, I also thought of something that uh, would be positive as well. Like basically what I just said is the world's real fucked up all these issues and they're trying to throw a mask over and blame the wrong person, the blame the people who are trying to help. So to anyone listening, if, if you want to work on yourself, if you want the best life for you and your family and just people in general, a good place to start is to evaluate your own beliefs, find out what your morals are and be a fair judge and call yourself out when you're in the wrong, because I, like I said earlier, I think the biggest issue is people just think that they're a good person and that that defines them and they don't have to do any of the legwork. You've got to constantly work on yourself and hold yourself up to a standard of being your own judge. Be critical. Mm. When's Be the, critical. Bi- when's your Bible come out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know something fucked up. It was, yes. I think like the other week I was thinking about like, what would be the coolest life to live? And I thought it would be having a religion after you Mm -hmm. and just having tons of followers, like dumb idiots who thought that me sucking chili dog was the end all (laughs) be all. Man, like that would be awesome, but that would not do any good for society. Those who doth suck chili dogs and do not get chili on their mouths. Do not then commit the sin that doth commit them to the heavens. <laughs> oh boy. A lot of monkeys in that Bible. Uh E. On that, that was good note. stuff. Thanks, E. You also covered like I had two more things to talk about. You covered him. Now I can't. I would avalanche it. Yeah. Or let the E, that's, I want that's some slobbery chili peen that we just sucked e, on right there. I want to get swept up in your avalanche. <laughs> Cheek, talk to me about Whoa. some bleaching. <laughs> Whoa. All right, Cheek, your topic. So you bleached your asshole. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> I heard you did it's a case be study. It's clean up in there. <laughs> All right, I think, Cheek, uh, let's get your Amazon reviews going. This has been a long episode. And uh, Hip's just sitting here. Hip, wiggle your toes for us. Over here. There you go. Um, Thanks, Hip. Hip's bored. I I need to hear these reviews because, Cheek, I I, I took a peek. I, I lied. I had to take a peek. I love them. Oh, he's gonna e the gospel lord, the man of scripture. All right. Oh, this is sick. UFO detector. So, if you're on YouTube, we still haven't figured out how to get our screen shares up there. So, um, we'll post this on our social media. This is in a ploy. You don't have to follow us. But We're not if private. you are gonna follow Just us, go you're to gonna go media. to at podcast bozo on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> That's at p o d c a s t b o z o. Follow us. Yeah. Follow um, us. So, Cheek, can you? <laughs> you want to know what makes me crazy? Amazon reviews. <laughs> All right. Which one do you want to do first, Sheik? Um, let's see here. I think start with the um, uh, the the bowstring, which should be one of the images. Bowstring. Not it's not the image. links. All right, hold on. Do you see my screen? Which one, one are we talking about? Nicholas yes. Cage bowstring. Got it. 
Do you want me to read it? Do you got it? So this is a product that I stumbled upon. It's a draw bowstring, or like for a recurve bow for archery, basically, right? Um, that's yeah, shooting arrows. That's the product. If you it's if you lifestyle. go back, I screenshotted another or a review of it down, so you can't scroll. You're gonna have to go back. I got you. Is that enough? So so basically, let's let's we gotta describe this a little more for. Listeners, uh, the description, we're on Amazon, you know how they have descriptive titles. It's a Keshes, which is the brand, it's all caps, um, important to know if, in, in case you're shopping. It's a Dacron bowstring replacement for traditional. <laughs> Dacron bowstring. Dacron bowstring replacement for traditional and recurve bow. Uh, side note, replacement bowstring, 12, 14, 16 strands, all length sizes from 44 to 70 inches. That is the range you can choose um, between those. That is, it's not one that works for all of those. Um, you select the size. The price ranges from eleven ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine. And to be fair, I don't know if this is fair. That's no, this isn't to be fair. But it looks like uh, some kind of BDSM torture weapon um, at first glance. Don't you see that? Yeah, yeah, it looks uh, kinky looks like for a sure. Ben, Ben would use this in his sex bed. Um, that being said, Cheek, you want to take take the review? Well, you got to take us there, Jay. You're in control. Cheek? I don't know. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So this review <laughs> is five oh, stars. <laughs> the uh, Not to blow up his spot, but the Amazon account holder is called Big Al. <laughs> Great! Exclamation point. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to pull it up on my end so I can read it aloud without any um, <laughs> without any issue here of asking you to zoom in. This yeah, is cheek, awesome. Cheek, cheek, don't, don't, be, don't be too close okay. to the mic. You're blowing our ears out. Great product. I use this for erotic asphyxiation. <laughs> Nothing works as no. well as a Dacron bowstring. I simply loop one end through the other and clamp the other end down to the closest pole with a large carabiner. The weight rating of 35 to 40 pounds is probably going to be a lifesaver considering I weigh far more and it's likely to break before anything bad happens. Oh my gosh. That is unreal. (laughs) Oh my God. Who? (sighs) I like to picture like a father and a son who love hunting and bowstrings looking through the reviews to see if this thing works. And they see big Al talking about the erotic asphyxiation. Oh my you know, God, in that scenario, dude. they're like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. We're going with Bass Pro band. <laughs> dude, you know, what's ridiculous. <laughs> Not Kesher is if you go to Amazon and you look for this bow, that's the first review that pops up. I didn't go hunting for that. That's the recommended Seven. review. Like, that's the one Amazon says. 70 <laughs> people found this helpful? Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Oh. Cheek, what, oh. Oh. Cheek, what made you think of this? How, yeah, how you stumble upon that? this? Um, what did you search? Cheek? I cheated. I cheated. What did you search? <laughs> BDSM? Uh, you looked up top Amazon uh, comments. Oh, uh, Cheek. That's all right. This does, does is that still take fantastic. away from awesome. anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I had never seen it before, so. All right, well, no. that's all that matters. All right, Cheek. 78 <laughs> people found this helpful. <laughs> so it's the that's last a lot part, of people. too. Luckily, it only holds 35 to 40 pounds, so nothing bad happens. I just imagine this guy being like, I could, like, what is his thought process? Like, if I want asphyxiation, like, all I got to do is lean into it, but with this weight rating, like, I'm still chill. I mean... What made this his and not another? You know he shopped around. <laughs> you write a review, you've shopped around. I don't know. I <laughs> love where this guy's coming from. It's not what the product's for, but he's he's a fan. He leaves a helpful comment, and he enjoys it. She- it's what Amazon's all about. I picture 
I picture Big Al as some oil tycoon living down in the South who like amongst friends and family is pretty reserved, but he knows what he's all about. And when he can hide behind the keyboard of the internets, he's not afraid to be who he is. I love Just that. Just let Wiener rumble. Good but big, big Al, Big Al yeah. needs a pl- a space to frolic, basically. But I would say yeah, that um, big, Al. big Al is the name of Syracuse's main radio host. You think? Might what be do you one think? The same correlation? Mm, no. All right, Cheek. Is this next next review worth looking at, or are we skipping on the uh, string along the the? Which one? I worked for a school district several years ago. After they stopped teaching archery, I pulled an old wood bow out of the trash. Oh, yeah, that's nothing. That's nothing. This person seems like a real Rob- Robin Hood, like a hatchet type story. Yeah, I started reading that one originally. It's like, this guy is also a character. After trying to make sense out of the length, need formula, I managed to order the wrong length. Too short. Package received. I think you could make any... Of these reviews funny if you like dramatize oh, yeah. them. Package received said 58 inches. Is that the bow or is that the string? Measure it again. No. Bow is long bow style. No recurve. In parentheses. 60 inch tip to tip. Four inches off for the record. 56 inches. Two inches shorter than the one I got. Or is this notation on the package of the bow length string? I tried to view the original order to see what I ordered, but Amazon wouldn't let me. One on the line saying the string groove to string groove. That would make the bow 59 inches. I'll try again. I'll try again. <laughs> Look for a set of lawn darts to throw at the dirt bank. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is crazy, but let's say the bow is 60 inches long, plus four inch, stick out tongue think. <laughs> oh, man. No way. Get cheek. Oh. You captured another one good right there. I, um. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't normally squeeze this much juice out of an Amazon review. Yeah, like there's so much this detail on this one. I also feel like the way they write this, they're wandering through their thoughts. You know, they don't, they didn't have a message before typing. They didn't have a note. They were like five stars. I liked it. And then they just kind of started typing. And then just went on and it's like on a falling down that leaf. road. It's like, where is it going to land? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great metaphor. Jay. All right, let's go on. Let's go on to the next review. All right. Chief. Stu Jeffs would be proud. Stu Jeffs would be proud. All right, Nick Cage, or should we save that for last? Because I feel like that's kind of a last. That's a juicy one. Yeah, let's save that one for last. Let's do a UFO click on either of the links. or 12 click, piece. Actually, click on the bottom link first. Nicholas Cage? No, 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 not Nicholas Cage. The, the Amazon link. Oh, yeah, that one is the, the 12 piece. We have that one up. Yeah, let's do that one. Should I go up to the product? Yeah, show the product. Trump coin, America, great challenge coin, American oh. Eagle, commemorative coin, 41 millimeter, stunning proof coin, re-election collections, edition series, 12 pieces. That's one, two, three, four mentions of coin. Um, so you're definitely sure it's a coin. These are glossy. I just like, I couldn't believe that this product existed. I, it I feel really foolish. blew me away. For those, for those of you who are listening, these are gold and silver. I think the same size as about a half dollar coin with our former fearless leader, Donnie Trump, looking just stoic, just a stoic, picturesque um, portrayal of him and it, I just didn't know that somebody that we made coins for him and it's like incredible to, I would like to point out that the um, the meticulousness of the seller is in question um, this, this bullet point says decoration and gift 
Decorate your house without any e office with these coins in your wallet shows others to support for president. Keep it in your wallet or keep it and enjoy the reaction. Sign for true Trump supporter. Good gift. Choice for Trump supporters and the MAGA CAG campaign supporters. It's a perfect memorabilia keepsake of this important upcoming election. My favorite thing about right, well, this let's, let's get to is, the reviews, not the description. Well, I think a couple more things we need to describe is that describe, <laughs> describe is there's one, two, three, four, five, six variants of the coin. Yeah. Um, the first is gold on a American flag background. The next is silver on American flag. Every single one has the same profile picture of Donald Trump, and it's not attractive. It's not flattering. Yeah. What I was going to say is that uh, typically, like, learning a lot in art history is that they always make, you know, with propaganda, they make someone look very attractive and young and look good and, you know, like, stoic and you... They it, always edit sexy. it to make it better. Right. Like they when did you're not, putting it on a metal coin. They made no attempt in this. He's got yeah. like that turkey neck hunched over look. <laughs> it's like it's like the level of his nipples just goes straight to his chin. That's the skin line. That's the skin line. It's like the traverse. It's a nipple to chin traverse. But then he has silver, gold, and then he has a silver and gold, and then a gold and silver. That honestly... Not important. Just, it's important to know that you have a lot of variations that you can buy. They all come together. You don't have a choice. You get all of them. Um, the reviews. Cheek. Tell me when to stop. What are we looking at? Want me to read the Hold titles? On. What? One is what? And it's four stars. What? <laughs> what? I, got, I really need to read this one. This will stop me in my tracks. What? What? I got these. It's four stars. One. I got these to gift for Trump fans. I am not one of them, but my brothers are. So I figured, what the hell? What? Maybe they will just give them back knowing that Trump's views on China are crazy. Yet the, yet his stuff is made. They're iconic. Ironic. Ironic excuse Ironic. me. All in all. All in all. Decent looking coins. I think my brothers will just ignore the China thing. <laughs> because for some reason, Trump can do no wrong. LOL. LOL. Two people find this helpful. I love that. I like this guy's laissez-faire look on life. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. One defect, though. Ooh, four stars. People love to be critics, but still give the reps. We really... All caps. Like the coins, except for the green spot on one of the gold coins. Oxidation? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Need to get a replacement, but have to return the entire lot? Just need one coin. <laughs> <laughs> Any help is appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, no. This is a five star about being very disappointed. Should we read it? Yeah. The product was damaged. At least six coins were in good, perfect condition. The rest looked dirty. Old. Scratched even. Some coins didn't match the description. I promised these coins to someone. Now they're just gonna have to wait. Whoever processed these items needs to be retrained, retrained due to the worst coins. We're boxed and ready to the customer. <laughs> Did we Let's get go the down, one that you wanted? Let's go down to Chris. I think the one below it is what intrigued me. You want to read this one, Cheek? Hold on. No, I, <laughs> I haven't seen the one I liked, but it's okay. These are all gold, just like the coins. Just like <laughs> I bought the, this is from Chris, I bought these because of a combination of liking the color gold and supporting Trump. They are a great product. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
that's just good fun. Cheap coins. Oh, this is it. This is yeah, it. Oh, that's right it. Here. That's it. Made, Made in China, China with the Y. Yes, no. that's it. <laughs> Not a very Four flattering stars. profile of the greatest man on earth, but I still like them. Also, made in China. Uh, <laughs> one, someone found that helpful. Man on earth. One person found that helpful. I'd like to trace that person down and have them on our podcast. Is that really? Oh my God, that is all sorts of levels of fucked up if these coins are made in China. Yeah, there's a lot of irony in it but um that's incredible for collectors it has all different trump designs friends and family enjoy the keepsakes that's what i think all of right when I was let's, let's move let's move on to my one. favorite my favorite one we're gonna do cheek can we just get a smile we haven't seen your face in a little bit <laughs> no thanks she okay she do you want to read it oh hold on yikes or do you want me to read it? The Amazon review. So what we have here is a UFO detector, an internal magnometer interfaced with a microcontroller for 24 hour a day, seven days a week monitoring for magnetic anomalies that have been reported with many UFO sightings. Now, what all of those fancy words means is this is going to tell you if there's a UFO near you. We got a UFO detector for sale on Amazon for a low price of $87.66 and free returns. If I'm going to jump in here about an analysis, like they said UFO detector. Look, I get it now. I get what the product is. It's a UFO detector. And then hyphen, internet, in, internal magnometer interface with microcontroller for 24 hours, seven days a week monitoring for magnetic anomalies that have been reported with many UFO sightings. Take it easy. It's great. That I think it's just meant to overwhelm you to make you feel dumb, like you don't know what you're yeah, getting into. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's meant to make you detective. feel like... Well, it's like when you see like a oh Dell H Dell HP computer yeah processing uh, i5 unit. processor. Yeah. It's like that's their attempt to mimic that. But this is very clearly also this thing costs ninety dollars and it looks like someone just uh, soldered a. They took a balloon and put a the Christmas light on the bottom. <laughs> they put a piece of glass over <laughs> yeah. it. Dude, it's a, so glass. a lot of erasma cadaz. Um. Man, I want to read is the some specs. snake oil salesman. I, I, if don't, I've seen I don't it. think I don't think yes. we need to read the specs. I think we should describe it for the people and then get into the the reviews because yeah, that's where the gold is. The There's too much in the specs to go with here. So for those listening, picture you've got a green plate on that Have you plate. Seen the solar lights that blow up. <laughs> on that Chief. green plate, there's a. I don't know what you said. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. You go, Cheek. On that green plate, what looks like a circuit board with some red lights that can light up in a circle and some other, uh, you know, thingamajiggers that, you know, look like technology inside them. Um, that's all enclosed by a glass cylinder, but Plexiglass. take that cylinder and have somebody do a samurai sword to it. <laughs> Um, like they do to bamboo, and that's the angle you're gonna get that <laughs> the cylinder has been cut at for some reason. And yeah, then it's a like bunch someone threw this on into a game of Fruit Ninja. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then on the uh, flat surface that's been created from the slice, you have a swirl of black dots that initially oh, I thought design. like. Are those like moon phases or like, no. I have no idea what's going on with those black dots. Those like are alligator tails maybe. with vibrations. <laughs> it's insane, but it's okay. Do you wanna, it's all going to help us with the aliens. Can I sum up the specs quickly? Just what I think of the specs. Go for it. it. It's basically, so like when you look at a normal like thing that you're looking at in Amazon, it's like you look at the height and weight dimensions. You look at like the, the processor power and stuff like this. This, the specs on this just list the statistics 
on how many people have seen UFOs <laughs> yeah. and the likeliness that someone has seen a UFO. It do, it's like, it's like, yeah, here's this product that detects UFOs, but we know you don't believe us. So look at this. Other people believe us. It's a distraction, but cheek I'm rolling. Which one do you want to, which oh one my caught God. your, pick your interest. Start at the tops. Just hold on. AJY. <laughs> Will trip when a strong enough move. Oh, oh no! Can Magnetic you move, field is can, near. Can you move it to the right a little bit so I can see the right end of it? You can were you put our screen into plus? So it, because it's in the center of my screen. Zoom out. But either a I'll bit read more. it. It's all the way right left for us. Okay. Which way do you want it? All right, I'm going to read it. A-J-Y. That's this person's name. Four stars. Title? Will trip when a strong enough moving magnetic field is near. That's not good for this foolproof UFO raider, but let's, let's read. I'm glad to own this little device. It's been sitting on my shelf for a couple of years. I've accidentally tripped it a few times, but... Dreading credit cards on the other side of the room. Bumping into the shelf. It is on, well, it's set off to, I think future versions of this same device would greatly be improved with the addition of a timer that activates when the alarm trips. So you know how long ago the device tripped. True. Did you arrive home and it's going off? I, I agree with that. If you're looking at functionality for UFO timer, just it going off isn't good enough because like you might be asleep or not home. That's not good. Father and friends love it. So, for record, that was a four-star review. People had some some revisions, but, like, we're happy with it in general. Father and friends love it. Five stars. The detector has become a beacon for people in the retirement community. <laughs> where my father displays it with pride. Yeah. A beacon of the retirement <laughs> community. What is, is that? That is a loaded sentence of content right there. I don't even know where to start with that. <laughs> is this guy just disillusioning, like, paranoid old dementian patients? Like, I know my grandma, like, passed away. She had dementia. If you put one of these, you might be able to convince her of that. He asked what to do if a UFO was detected and offered to send his wife out to see if any family members were returning. This man was going to sacrifice his wife. I'm going to find oh this one helpful. Oh my god, I love that. It works. Five stars. Great. It works great. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, is that dude just like seeing UFOs fly by and like checking his meter and seeing like, yep, all right, that one was a UFO. That one too. That one too. <laughs> boom, boom, UFO, boom, UFO, boom. There's a highway of UFOs up there. I imagine, like, because the first thing you do is you put the stars down, and then you put the title, and then you put the description when you're filling one of these out, so I feel like he was fucking stoked. He was like, five stars. And it was like, tell us what this is about. And he's like, it's working, so uh, it works. And then he's like, right. describe it. <laughs> let me. Um, it works great. <laughs> let me read this review below uh, from Jeff. Flam, flam, flam holes, flam holes. What do you like in the middle? Flam can holes. you read it here? I can read. I have it pulled up on my computer, so I, I got perfect control now. Give me, give me flames holes. Four stars. A cool way to detect aliens and more. What a unique device. It sits on our table, red lights circling around the inside. When an electromagnetic force comes near, the alarm sounds not too loudly as to scare the aliens away. <laughs> One more thing. However, it also apparently detects spirits in the room. If they come too close to the, to the device, obviously their electromagnetic output is far lower than an aliens. So they pretty much have to touch the device. Still pretty cool though. I want to meet this person in real life. I want to meet all of these people in real life and just get a taste for what they're like. Oh my God. Okay. And then, so you guys scrolled past it, but if, if you go back up, there's a question and answer column. 
Oh, I love these. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the first one. Oh, Will no! this also detect anal probes? <laughs> Hold on. I'm starting with the first one. In which right. dimension... Well, let's, let's wrap this up, but get, get us through this, Chi. In which dimensions does this detector operate? The eighth. It was upgraded from the old model, which only detected in seven <laughs> dimensions. No. But the newer one does detect up to the eighth dimension. Hope this helps. <laughs> okay, question number two. Will this also Gee, do detect... Do you have any idea how these work? Say that again, Jay. What do you mean? Like, how do the question and answers work? No what? idea. I don't care. Who gets, who gets, who gets on these? <laughs> I'm just wondering because that's an approved answer. That's in Amazon's top four. Like... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Will this also detect anal probes? I suppose it depends on the type of probe. The device <laughs> claims to measure specific energy sources, sources somehow affiliated with alien spacecraft. If such a probe were to leave behind, no pun intended, this energy Ew. and this energy were actually affiliated with aliens and the device does actually detect such energy, then likely yes. <laughs> Next Jeff, question. Jeffrey Bates on November 15th, 2014. Will, 26 upvotes. Will the signal interfere with my ghost detector? <laughs> Answer. <laughs> Only if the ghost is having sex with the alien in the UFO at the time of the encounter. <laughs> I took a uh, screenshot of that every one. That one's single unreal. one of these. Oh, cheek. Did, did you also find this one on like a, a website reference? No, to it? I was just looking up alien stuff for that one. I was very happy. Oh, this, this, is, is this might be the most gold <laughs> I've ever found on Amazon ever before. Will it interfere with my ghost detector? <laughs> I think the favorite might be the eighth dimension one. The guy spoke with such authority. On what dimensions and apparently, this thing could cross? Apparently, there's a previous model. <laughs> and I'll tell I don't you know about you guys, but whether that guy's lying and just making fun of people or not, it's still a brilliant response. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I have to assume that he's joking because this thing is just a piece it's of plexiglass much. with blue <laughs> lights in it. There's no way he's taking it that seriously. So my last note on on the alien detector is that is at the top of my Christmas list next year, and if you guys don't get me that, yes. I'll be very upset. Oh, cheek! Expect it in the mail. All right, cheek. It's probably on its way. <laughs> And Jay, I guess I'll I'll let you present my last one. Because I know how much you're going to love it. What's your last one? Oh, the Nick Cage. Can I please? Yeah. I forgot about this one. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> first of all... Chagarute. First of all, I haven't even read the description. <laughs> From what I can tell, it's a print of Nicolas Cage on a pillowcase. His eyes fucking beam through your soul like Rasputin's. It's called a Haya Yin Jung Nicholas Cage pillow case 20 inch by 30 inch cover for bedroom so sofa and I think that means sofa gifts double sided printed pillow core not included so the pillow is not included so long way short it's a pillowcase just go um, wow, just, I just go down to the review it's all you got to do for the record, it's 99 ratings, four and a half stars. Uh. I just, I can't emphasize how much his eyes pierce. Cheek, do you want to read this one or can I? I'll let you read this one, Jay. Thank you so much. Start with the, um, the <laughs> title of the review, though. Yeah. Five stars. You, uh, title, not stars. Okay, I'll, five stars. I'll read the title. Five his stars. His name is Marco's... From Marcos go Black, never go mm -hmm. to bed insecure again. <laughs> <laughs> it was. This is 2020. This is recent. This is not out of date. December 30th, too. Right before the new year. In the United States. This is close to home for any of you listening. I feel so protected knowing that Nicholas is in my in bed with me. This pillowcase is the first thing I see when I've awakened. 
And the last thing I see before I close my eyes for my deep slumber. The pure sexiness of this man. Picture on your pillow will inspire you. Are you having relationship issues? <laughs> <laughs> Family fights? <laughs> or a crippling mental illness? <laughs> That's a question. Are you having relationship issues, family fights, or a crippling mental illness? This will solve all of that, apparently. Nicholas can ease the pain. Before I got my custom Nicholas Cage pillowcase, it's not custom, everyone can get this, I had trouble sleeping. <laughs> That's three dots after that one. My insomnia took control of my life. I can tell you that when this product was shipped to me, Put on my little pillow <laughs> and use for sleep. <laughs> this is written excellently. <clears throat> that was my narrative. That it was the best slumber in my entire life. I imagine this person is clapping like a Karen when they say this. He cradles my head so softly. I used to be afraid of the dark. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall for scams like sleep number. <laughs> I'm glad this is ridding us of the doubt. <laughs> or Tempur-Pedic. Get a Nicolas Cage pillow cover. <laughs> Go on, you deserve it. The seduction is calling you. This is now my most prized possession. And although I do not like to admit it, I tend to brag about it. Like to dissect that sentence a little bit. But I feel like it's inherent. I just want to show it off the, to the world. I just want to show it off to the world. I am restful. That's the sentence. I am restful. All of a sudden, this reviewer has found themselves in a Buddha state of, state of mind. I am restful. I am at peace. Oh, I am relaxed. I am reborn. This is sounding me scratching my head. Hopefully, it will be able to find me a girlfriend or job someday. I have faith that Nicholas will make it happen. No, oh, that's bullshit. Only five people found this helpful? That dude put his heart and soul into that. Are you joking me? If that's not the greatest review, product review I've ever read, then I don't know what is. Hey, I cannot pick a favorite line of that. I snapshot it. I do really like the, the change into your sexiness of this man's picture on your pillowcase will inspire you to are you having relationship issues, family fights, or crippling mental illness? <laughs> yeah, cr Nicholas will ease the pain. Crippling <laughs> mental illness. This is, you know, a lot of psychologists are starting to prescribe Nicholas Cage pillows instead of <laughs> science. Yeah, emotional sexy, assistance pe like pets. Sexy hairy chest will cure everything in life for you. I love get you a job. Um, that this guy's just going after sleep number. Don't fall for yeah. scams like sleep number, Tempur-Pedic. Like this guy probably spent so much money on a fancy sleep number mattress and Tempur-Pedic pillows and still couldn't sleep. Little did he know all he had to do was wrap his pillow in a Nicolas Cage pillowcase. Taking on Big Pharma, Marcos Black. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Those were my Amazon reviews. I, I love those cheek. I, I mean... For me, I just keep staring at when he, I feel like at some point he believes he became like the Buddha or the Quran. I am restful. I, I am, am relaxed. Restful. I am reborn. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right. My Cheek, goodness. wonderful job on that. Good you word. It. Cheek, you, this is something you always do. You spin yourself as anxious about the results of your segment. And, uh, 
little did we know you nailed it. Yeah, it's a psychological <laughs> tactic I utilize in order to downplay the potential for success when in reality I'm going to exceed your expectations, therefore creating this world hey. where I am highly successful in your eyes. Their sell over deliver. Maybe we should start at the beginning of these episodes saying you are about to listen to a pile of shit. This is shit you are smelling. This is garbage you are hearing. Thanks for listening. And then we end the podcast <laughs> after that initial segment. Kisses. All right, but we should right. actually end Sorry, the podcast. Adios. Long one. Hope you enjoy it. Oh, you know what we should do is we should end this podcast with the noises of trash compactors. Cheek, hit us. I don't know how to do that noise. Cheek, that was dog shit. Hey, 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 you made it. Thanks for listening to all three parts of the podcast. Um, I know we probably already signed off in the pre- previous recording. I'm recording this afterwards, and I just um, wanted to kind of sign off and thank you for listening to part three, all three parts, I should say. As always, there's more episodes coming. Uh, if you're listening to this in the past, then um, look to the future. There's more out probably already. Uh, if you listen to this live... Um, just wait a couple days. We got a new one coming out, uh, next Monday, like we always do. So thanks. Have a great week and the Boses love you.